Moving on to making this mixer ready for cleaning. Um, I reckon you can probably leave these caps for these push push buttons on, but in order to get at the shaft around here, like sometimes if that's dirty, that can cause crackling. So we're going to need to take these knobs off. So we'll just pull off from the front. Um, I have a video about cleaning a four track. So basically I'm going to be spraying this up with some Windex, give them a light brush and a rinse, drying them before they go back on. We'll come back once all of these are removed. Quite a bit of uh, dust and muck there. These pot, there's a hole underneath where you can get into the part where the conductive wiper glides against the conductive surface. And we also need to kind of spray around the shaft here because dust getting down and into the lubricant in here, that can cause scratchiness as well. I go into this in quite a lot of detail. I've got a video on the 244 Mixer channel demonstrating the whole thing. But I would tend to, for instance, I'll just do it in one, get some on the shaft there and some into that recess there give it a wiggle that's going to dislodge a lot of the lubricant in the dirt blow that out with compressed air let it evaporate and i might depending on how dirty it is repeat that process a few times if you use for instance surface all super 10 you're going to need to lubricate particularly the shaft but ideally also inside there as well just because a strong contact cleaner like this is going to remove that lubricant in my region at least this kind of contact cleaner that's got a lubricant built into it is a lot more expensive like this in my right hand is about five times more expensive than the one in my left hand but if i've got a unit that only needs a light clean then i might just use this in one pass without the compressed air save myself time that's why i have it on hand please refer to my other video if you need more detail about how to do that you can assume that i'm doing that off screen let's say though that we've got some sort of electrical issue in here and we need to trace or solder or just inspect the underside for lifted tracks or cold joints, that kind of thing. What's connecting us here? We've got two cable pin that's going over to, I guess that's the power indicator LED over here. These sockets are nicely annotated on the PCB, which isn't always the case with these multi track recorders, so that's good. So this says bar graph and uh, the headers match the colour of the connectors. Moving down here, all our faders are on a separate board and by the way the faders the cleaning process is going to be more or less the same so four like that and then an additional two white ones different numbers of pins so we can match those up easily two clips where my two thumbs are clip those in it oh i've knocked off a cap there and put that back on but that tips from that side and uh comes out of a lip there so let's see what we've still got connected Two points going into a four pin cable going to the underneath here. So one, two, three places. There are cables that are I'll flip this over. See they're passing through holes and then two headers through those holes. And a cable here is terminating on a red plug here. So that's our record playback board under there. We had this one cable coming from the corner into that one. And these three short cables are either different colours or different pin numbers. Um, that should be easy enough to match up. So let's figure out where that wire is going and then we can detach this completely. It's passing through this kind of clip thing here into a four pin plug here. So I mean it says two mixer above that header. I think that since this record playback board has come loose of its clips and lips anyway then I will continue to detach it from the system so we can see that there's a cable terminating in a yellow plug down at the bottom there. I'll pry that off with a flathead screwdriver. Earlier on you could see that there are also these um, other grey cables that looked a bit like the magnetic head cable. Pull those off. And see what remains. Power input coming from this board here, that's a yellow two pin header there. And then it looks like this three pin cable up here, maybe you can't quite see it, I'm pushing at it with my left thumb. That pulls off from the front actually. Anyway that's that detached now. Um, let's find out where that cable is connected to. It's running all the way along here to the switch. Yeah, that's the Dolby noise reduction switch. Where was that? It was coming through that slot there and joining to the record playback amp in that corner. That would give us access to any soldering or anything we needed to do. 
let's remove this fader daughter board next. Apart from the cables that were joining it to the other part of the mixer, we seem to have one cable left passing through this recess here. Following that through, that's terminating it in a red header and it says input beside the header on this board. String that through the space here and then pull back these two clips and that will slide out. You can see that there are lips here, here and here that hold that in place. PCB function control. There's a cable folded underneath, going to a red three pin header there. Two cables here. Yeah, white ones, different numbers of pins, so you can match them up that way. It looks like we're going to need to take this pitch control out now. The pitch control is just going to this one yellow header here, and look, there's the uh, trim pot for the mean pitch. So at 12 o'clock, this should be three and three quarter inches per second. So if you have a 1K test tape, then you would adjust that with this in the indent at 12 o'clock to make sure that it was playing back at one kilohertz in the center, and then you can make just I think it's about plus or minus 10% of the overall speed using this to compensate for you know maybe you're moving on to recording from another machine that wasn't as well calibrated that kind of thing so I'll just get that screw there out a little over a centimeter long wide ferrule brass standard head there's a pin in that top left corner with a hole on the PCB Move that out of the way so let's see if that gives us a clear idea of where yeah, so this last control PCB cable is going into a red board. Here it's just all, the excess length of it is tucked under that pitch control. So be mindful of that for the purposes of reassembling this. Let's get this meter out now. That clip is just for this punch in punch out PCB. Two pin plug going into the black two pin header on that board. Here's your digital meter. It looks fairly firmly attached to the plastic chassis itself. There is a white header for it here and that's just to allow us to detach the system control board completely. Guessing that these other cables are going to go through this hole we're going to find that they join on to this board back here. Let's look. Yeah we've got a one white one at the bottom so that'll be sending signals from system control to these relays that are controlling whether this is in record or playback mode. And then look further up here. One more black one, one more red one. Two pin and three pin headers respectively. Box through here. And at that point the system control board should come away. We've just got one clip here with lips on the other side. So pull that clip, get the lip out. And uh, on reconstruction I guess all of these are going to need to go through this gap here. Right, really that just leaves us meters in the far side of this AC transformer and this board that's got the filtering and rectification and the fuses for the power supply. I guess these transistors are voltage regulators and then we've got switches for the record and playback heads and here's your main 80 kilohertz BIOS oscillator. These will be the adjustable controls for the individual record oscillation. It looks like we're actually screwed into the chassis here, standard one and a bit centimeter wide ferrule screw, a common ground wire coming from beside this big capacitor and then through a screw up here. Same kind of screw. I'll just quickly write E beside that hole so I remember to put the earth wire back there. And then we've got a black and a red connector going to transistors screwed to the side of this transformer. I guess they're just using this part of the transformer as a heat sink. You can see this whitish um, thermal paste there. Yellow and blue cables seem to be wired into these two amp fuses. That'll be the input from the secondary side of the transformer. Just locate the clips. There's one there, one there. Come on. And that will tip out. You can see we've got this bit of shielding underneath it. We can turn this over so you could be really complete. You can see that these uh, wires have been hot glued to stop there being any extra strain on the solder pads, but actually the hot glue is so old now that it's coming away. These individual meters. Yeah, they just clip out. So what we've got, yellow on the right, then black, then red, then white. Just for shits and giggles, let's detach this Dolby switch completely. That is going in there, that cable is 
mains cable retainer. I think you need a sort of specialist tool to undo that. So that's going to need to sit there. Let's see, we needed to solder it. This power socket this needs to be held onto the chassis with two screws. Yeah, so we could get everything there if we needed to. And uh, you can also see that it's going to be these four screws in here that are attaching the transformer to this plastic chassis. I'm going to leave that in situ and point in me demonstrating how to unscrew a screw. Um, that's enough access to be able to do anything that I needed to do. And I can get in here and get all of this old dirt and dust off there now. I've uh, gone all handheld here for a minute. Just want to point out the location of the calibration trim pots. So up here on the mixer board, you can see that you've got the four trim pots for the corresponding four meters. So, you know, the idea with that is that you put in like a line level signal and make sure that all four of the meters read that input at the same level in the meters. And then here on the record playback, board they're nicely labeled you can see them in groups of three so you've got record level chord eq and playback level i can't actually see the overall track labeled but the components begin with the track number so like you know that's resistor 353 whereas that's resistor 453 with that's resistor 153253 so the first number in the three digits component code for each of these four sections denotes which track it corresponds to I've got detailed videos about doing calibration, so check the homepage of my channel if you want to see how you go about doing that in more detail. Watch out for this unit in upcoming videos. I'm no seer, I'm no Mystic Meg, but presumably there might be videos where I record with this, do an overview of its features and specifications and compare it to other units. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.